Hey guys, this is Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. And this is going to be the third video that I'm making based on putting together jewelry, if you would. Now, I, I've had a lot of technical issues recently, so unfortunately I haven't been able to produce many things. I just produced a book review. Um, two days ago, and I just posted it this morning, so I do apologize. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I've been out of commission <laughs> for a little while, and I'm actually having to order a new computer, which won't be delivered for a while. So, what we're going to do today is I'm going to make a few pendants, and... These are going to be pendants without holes. Now, this is probably the most popular type of pendant wrap because simply there's no holes that you can put any wires through or strings through or anything for that matter through. So, let's start off with that. So, what I'm going to do is I have my sterling silver squared wire, okay, and I have three pieces, so this is going to make six strands around the stone, and we're going to be using a golden tiger's eye for this wrap today, and I'm just going to pull some wire off really fast so I can start the wrap. Now this wrap, again, is very, very basic. It's not anything to run home about. But you can build on this type of wrap, which is definitely a good thing. So I'm teaching you the basics of what I do right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire, which is another silver wire. I'm going to get it centered about halfway through with both three wires in place, the three square wires, and then also the silver wire, which is the round wire. And I'm just going to hold these in place. I'm going to start wrapping. Now, what's really important to me is to keep the three wires, the square wires, which is your base wire, keep them flat or as flat as possible. Now, as you're going through this, you may want to count how many times you've wrapped. That way you could do it on both sides. That's the reason why we have two ends of wires being built from the middle to start this wrap, like so. And again, I've been doing this for quite a few years, so if it does not work out the first time, do not panic. It'll work out eventually. You're going to get kinks in your wire, you're going to get frustrated at certain things, and I know it's not pleasant, but unfortunately it does happen. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take one wire, pull these two away, take this wire at the end, as you can see it, and you're going to bend it, okay? And you take the same wire on the other side, and you're going to bend it in the same direction. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have these two leftover tails from the center. And we're going to move that out of the way. We're just going to start wrapping these. And this is where you really want to count. Because you don't want to have one side with six wraps and the other one has ten, or one has eight, the other one has ten, or, or what have you, is you want to keep in mind that way it looks even, it looks professional when you're doing it. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we're going to do one more that's ten. Okay. So now we have ten wraps around this wire, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gonna move that out of the way. Nine and ten. Okay, so there we go. Now we're even on both sides with a wrapped wire. Now, you can keep going all the way up if you want to. It's entirely up to you. Um, this is also a technique I use in order to wrap spheres or spheres, whatever you want to call them. The round ones look like marbles, but they're actual crystals. So what I'm going to do with this side now that I have this wrapped is pull this one out, which is the opposite side. And again, the same with this one. So we're going to pull these two out, just like you did with the other ones, but we're going to leave these bare. Now, you can wrap these. In addition, you can cut these off and wrap them if you want to. But I tend to leave these bare because that way I can make two different designs on two sides, and that way the pendant is reversible. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these really fast and you want to cut them as close as possible to your starting wire. And then you have these little tails. You want to make sure that they are flat on the surface. Otherwise, especially if you're selling these or gifting them to somebody, they're going to stick out and scratch them or cut them and you certainly don't want that to happen. And I will say this, I've had a situation where it has happened, even though I thought everything was secured. It's not pleasant for you or your client, especially when you're in a convention or a live environment. It can be very daunting and very scary because <laughs> you have to stand there and apologize over and over and over and over again, and you feel terrible. And unfortunately, that's a part of the game. So what I'm going to do now is figure out which side of my stone I want to be the front. So let's do... That's pretty. Let's do this side. Okay, so we're going to take these two middle wires and push them back out a little bit to create the setting for the stone. Now, this is probably not going to stay right away. They usually don't because I'm using a, as you can see, a tumbled stone and it's very slippery. So with that being said, you just have to be a little careful when you're doing this sort of thing and getting everything in place. And then you have to push your piece in place so it fits. Now this isn't working the way I want it to, so we're gonna push these together, like so. The back. Put that in there again. Oh, look at that, I'm using the wrong wire. This is why I said you have to keep everything flat, is so you can tell which wire is which, and you don't mix them up. Okay, so this is the back. And I want the back to sit like this on the back of the stone. That way it's supported. Now, since you have the support on this side, what you want to do is you want to grab the other wires and pull them together. Now, the ones that you wrapped in the front to, in the beginning, those you want to pay attention to because they're going to become a major key player in keeping the pendant within the setting. So I always move them to the front a little bit, like so. And this way you can mold 
your wires around the stem like this. And again, this is quite a pain in the butt sometimes because sometimes it just doesn't want to work. And other times it'll work so quickly and so nicely. Oh, that looks pretty. Okay. So now we have this done. So what we're going to do now is take all of our wires. And at this point, you can keep them however you want. Because all you're going to do is you're going to wrap these. Okay. So you want to wrap these a few times. So now, since you want to keep the stone in here, the setting, now is your time to push it into place as you want it to be before you close this off. So I got my stone in there. I want to push this down towards the stone to help keep this intact. Now, in addition, take your wires and separate them a little bit, like so. That'll prevent this from pushing back up. So this needs to be wrapped a little bit closer. There we go. Get that out of the way, which is our top wire. So what you're doing right now is kind of creating the tail and a bale at the same time. There we go. Okay. So now we got this all set. So we need to tighten this wire down here. So you want to pull it as far as you can and then you're going to tuck it into the frame of the other wires and make sure that it's smooth there's nothing sticking out again you don't want to cut people <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> now these two short little wires this was a mistake <laughs> which is okay and quite frankly you can overcome those mistakes very simply and how you do that is you're just gonna tuck them so I'm going to take this. Actually, let's make a design out of them. So let's do this. Let's just go and separate them a little bit. This. Watch your fingernails. You'll hurt yourself. And we're going to create little, little loops out of them into the front of the pendant. Like so. And this one over here. Just to give it a little design. There we go. Okay. So now you have these four others. Now the two in the front, you want to bring those back up. And this is going to become your bale. So what we're going to do from here, is you're going to wrap this however you want. You could do a ladder effect or you could do what I'm doing, which is just your basic wrap. Like this. Make sure you pull that tight. Now, also the wire. When you purchase your wire, you want to make sure that you get it from a reputable supplier. Now, you can buy wire at Michael's. You could buy wire at on Amazon. You could buy it from uh, manufacturers, which is what I do, because I like to have a sterling silver square wire to work with, half round and round. But those could be expensive. So you want to start, when you're starting, start with a copper core. All right, now this is really hard. I'm going to move this up. And then we're going to bend these back. Now, when I say work with a copper core, that is a less expensive wire to start off with. And you can get those again, Amazon, Michaels. Um, I even think Walmart has them. So you could buy copper wire from really anywhere. 
It's, it's pretty popular. Okay, so now I have my bail, but I haven't attached it yet. So I'm gonna do, take this and I'm going to spring it forward like so. Put that back in there. Okay, now I have these two pieces. Now, what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna attempt to do, <laughs> is go ahead and pull these through another wire from our base. And why I'm doing that is because it gives it a more finished appeal. And if you can't, like these are really short, so apparently I can't do that. What I'm gonna do is take this and create a curl. So it's sealed and closed off and I will push it around this wire like so, just so it has a way of connecting or There we go. So it has a way of... Ugh, this is really hard today. A way of having an ending to the actual bail itself. There we go. Okay, now this, this wire that I have here, the sterling silver, it's very hard and you can buy different types of wires. You could buy a semi-hard, a semi-soft, a full soft, a full hard. I think I accidentally bought a semi-hard when I wanted to buy a semi-soft. Okay, so this needs to be pushed back over here a little bit. We're kind of doing the finishing touches on the, the setting of the stone really quick. Twist it down here a little bit. There we go. And you will hurt your fingers. <laughs> it's going to happen. Don't try to avoid it. You're going to hurt your fingers the first few times you do this. Okay, so now we have these pieces here. Now, because we have these little extras that are hanging out, like right here, this needs to be curled up a little more. Because that is sticking out like a sore thumb. That's going to cut the one. Okay. So what we could do with this is you could just take this and wrap it around. Like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tuck it in the back. So what you're actually doing is reinforcing the setting as well. Now at this point, your stone can still pop out. Okay, so you have to be careful, but you also have to be very stern with the wire because you don't want the wire to control what you're making. You want to control the wire. So we're gonna tuck that in there. There we go. Okay, now this one, the same thing. We're doing another crossover this way. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's take it up and around like that. That's pretty. Okay. So in some cases, you have to control your wire, like I just said. But also, it's a good thing if you go with the flow, if you cut your wire a little too short like I just did, and that helps you still create something very beautiful, but so you don't have to unwrap your entire project and start over again. And that is a waste of time and a waste of money because you wasted a bunch of wire. There we go, let's tuck that one in. Okay, 
So here is our basic concept for a pendant. Okay, it is open back. Now at this point, because you have everything secured, eh, that's not secure, that's still sticking out. There we go, okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, <clears throat> so you have everything secured. So what you wanna do is, see this is a little crooked on the bottom, it's just adjusted the way that you want it to go. So I want this to be more back here. So I'm going to squeeze in between because my stone is still not set. Go and then take this one and do the same. So I'm moving the wires to the back more. And then these, now these are a little, these are a little loose. That forward. Make sure that's still tucked in. So, okay. <clears throat> this around the side, this around the side. Okay, there we go. So now our stone is all set. It's not going anywhere. Okay. And that's just by strengthening the wires that you're actually using in the front and the back. Now the ones on the side, as you can see, they're, they're positioned themselves in places where they fit the most because this isn't a perfect rectangular, triangular, or circular type of stone. So this is all set and ready to go. I can put this on my website if I want to or my Etsy store like I normally do. but. That's one basic wrap. Now I'm going to show you another one in the next video, which is a clear quartz. And this is going to be a raw clear quartz, which you're going to see a complete different way in wrapping because this is so, it can be so difficult to wrap because they're so smooth and they're so slippery. But I'll get that to you in the next video, okay? Take care. Bye.